Halloween is almost here, and Mr. Nightmare put up a video of three true disturbing Halloween horror stories. Let's check it out. Halloween 2016. My three friends and I, who for the purpose of this story will be named J, K, and L respectively, were trick-or-treating downtown. Downtown was always a mob scene on Halloween, only because the houses were so close together, meaning more candy for the amount walked. Right. Ten o'clock was always the time things really started to die down, and by 10.30, we were really the only kids still out trick-or-treating. Only like one in ten houses actually opened their doors this late. So we called it quits with the trick-or-treating and decided to just screw around. It was a Saturday night after all. As we called it quits with the trick-or-treating, a lone person in a clown costume was oh, walking no. really, really slowly from the black fog in the distance. No. This was a legit clown costume too. The makeup was crazy. From the slit mouth smile to the blood-filled boils, it was a scary costume. The like, four of us laughed and screamed in reaction, but ultimately walked away. Like the movie It. We went to a park that was nearby to just goof around and make a mess with silly string and shaving cream and whatever. We oh, weren't no. the first, however. Strands of silly string littered the playground, as well as shaving cream smudged on the walls of a bathroom building in the park to spell out obscenities. Like swear words? We all hung out on the playground. But Jay pointed out to the dark horizon, where two clowns were walking over to us. Oh, One no. of them the same clown from earlier. I didn't think it was possible, but the second clown was even more disturbing than the first. The first clown now seemed to be welding some kind of long, spear-like object. They both approached us really, really slowly. The funniness of the situation quickly wore off as they got closer and closer. Then, they started to charge us. Is that a winter clip? We all ran in different directions. Cause it's easy. None of the two clowns was chasing me. Out the park and down the street I ran. I didn't know the area too well, but I did know how to get back to Elle's house. I ran all the way there. About halfway there, I lost the clown. I called Elle and told him I was in his backyard. He was out of breath, but he said he just lost one of the clowns and was on his way over to <coughs> Me. I said I'd call Jay, and he said he'd call Kay. Luckily, Jay picked up on the first ring. He wasn't being chased, so he didn't sound as freaked out as Elle did. What about Kay? I told him to meet us at Elle's house. Ten minutes later, all four of us were in Elle's backyard, gathering our thoughts and discussing what just went down. We had a good laugh about it now that it was over as we ate some of the candies that we got. Kay went home, while me, Jay, and Elle hung out in the living room for a while. Lights off, TV on, playing some Xbox One party game. Jay looked out the window and then ducked and told us to shh and turn off the TV. When we asked why, he said there was a clown out there. I didn't believe him, so I looked out the window. He screamed, don't, but it was too late. The clown standing outside of Elle's house looked right at me through the window. I shut the curtains and told Elle he wasn't lying. His parents weren't home, so going to his dad wasn't an option. Instead, uh, we shut off the TV and went upstairs to Elle's bedroom. We looked out the window. One. The clown wasn't there anymore. Actually, we never saw either of the clowns again. But the next morning, Elle texted the three of us, saying he found a rubber clown nose on his backyard patio table. He said it was obviously placed there with intent to scare us, and mission accomplished because it worked. Luckily, that clown epidemic didn't last more than a month later. After that, it just became an old story. Yeah. It was a school night Halloween. My mom and dad took my two twin brothers out trick-or-treating. I didn't have plans, so my parents kind of forced me to answer the door and hand out candies while they were gone. 
Since we live in a cul-de-sac on a dead-end street, we get next to no trick-or-treaters on Halloween, so every time the doorbell rang, I kind of jumped. I was in the living room watching TV, with the bucket of candies next to me on a small table. Butterfingers, the one and only candy my mom always got on Halloween for some reason. The doorbell rang, so I took the orange bucket and brought it to the door and opened it. Is that hell on there TV was someone in a scream mask and robe holding out a pillow sack. It didn't look like he got a lot of candy for the night. And given that the night was almost over and nobody was really coming to the house, and he was alone, which is always kind of sad, I gave him a bunch of candy. He walked away without saying thanks, which kind of made me feel bad, but it was honestly whatever. I stopped thinking about it as soon as I sat back down on the couch. The movie I was watching ended, so I started surfing the channels. During one of the brief moments of silence as the TV flipped from one channel to the other, I heard a thud and a bump come from downstairs near the back door. To better hear what it could have been, I turned the volume on the TV all the way down and went to the stairway. The back door was wide open. My heart started racing as I started to feel sick inside. I had forgotten to lock it when I went back there. The big question was if what I heard was the sound of the door opening or closing, and if someone was in the house. Naturally, I called down the stairway for my mom and dad, and then my twins' names. The silence from down in the dark den was creepy as hell. I was afraid to go down there. Unfortunately, there's no door to separate the main floor from the den stairway, so sitting in the living room suddenly didn't seem very comfortable. I kept the TV on, but muted. I just felt safer with the extra light it provided. It took a while for some reason, but it finally hit me to call my parents and ask them to come home. My mom said they'd be home within half an hour. I told my mom I was scared that someone was downstairs because I heard something. She assured me that there was nothing and it was just my imagination. Oh, no. I hung up the phone and immediately heard the sound of wood foundation cracking under one of the carpeted steps to the den. I froze on the couch. Literally, I couldn't move a muscle, not even a finger. Then there was another crack. As silently as I could, I sat up from the couch into a half-crouched position, tiptoeing to the front door. But as I passed the couch that blocked the view of the den stairway from the living room, I saw something on the stairway. It was a scream mask, leering up from the stairs at me, but in a way where he was obviously not trying to get caught. The angle at which I saw the mask and the dark lighting made the sight so much more disturbing. When he saw me, though, he went the other way, back into the darkness of the den. I locked myself in my room upstairs and called my mom again to tell her what happens. They cut their trip short and came home. I would call 911. Only when my parents got home did I feel safe to leave my room. My dad and I checked the whole den, every closet, every room. Luckily, there was no one. The moral of the story simply comes down to keeping your doors locked. Because apparently, this guy just helped himself through our back door. Yeah. My older brother was having a Halloween party. He was a sophomore in college. I was actually only in the 8th grade. Our parents weren't home all weekend, so he was taking advantage of the opportunity, I guess. He made it abundantly clear he didn't want me in the house during the party, but fortunately I already made plans to go trick-or-treating with two of my friends. We all agreed it would probably be our last year trick-or-treating, so we wanted to make it a good time. We started midday, right after school. The prime time where most kids were out, most everyone answers their doors and still had abundant supplies of candies. We each filled two bags of candy by dark, making stops at our houses in between to bring them home, of course. Mm -hmm. But we weren't done. We weren't satisfied yet. We needed another bag, of course. After eating dinner and resting at my friend's place for a while, we went back out with empty bags and flashlights. You'll find out why in a little bit. It was probably around 9 o'clock now. 
getting candy was a bit slower by now since most buckets were empty and not everyone was answering their doors. An hour flew by because we were still having fun, though we didn't get much candy this time. By the time it was like 10.30 or 11 we stopped because it just seemed obnoxious to knock on people's doors this late. Everyone already went home because it was a Tuesday night, a work night and school night, but we already agreed we'd be skipping school the next day. We were all in the same homeroom and already knew nothing was going on at school tomorrow, so to us, the night was still young. So we went for a run to what locals called the Ghoul House. It was a house with some history. A couple got divorced oh, no. after their child somehow died in the house, and then the wife moved out. A couple weeks later, the husband shot himself at the kitchen table. It's been fenced off ever since. Why the house hasn't been sold or torn down by now is beyond me. When we got there, we realized how scary the house was in the dark. It stood taller than the other houses, and it had a black fence surrounding the front yard, with overgrown bushes hugging it. The front gate was pretty easy to hop. The deviance of what we were doing just made it so much more thrilling. We walked around back just to be safe, hoping no neighbors would see us. The back windows were boarded up from the inside, and the back door had a table wedged up against it. Someone clearly tried really hard to keep people out, possibly a neighbor. Through teamwork, we were able to lift the table quietly from off the door and onto the grass. The door was missing a doorknob and it pushed in relatively easily. We were inside, and it felt weird, felt uncomfortable, and at the same time, exhilarating. All of us had our flashlights, creating a decent amount of light in the otherwise pitch black building. We were in the back living area of the house, some kind of den. The wood floors were all creaky as hell, and everything seemed to have been untouched for years. It didn't seem like anyone ever really broke in there before. Alright, my camera cut me off because the video file reached the maximum size. I, I, need, I need to fix that. That was a really creepy Mr. Nightmare video with all the uh, Halloween stories. I, I have to say, I don't know how much of it captured, but the third story was definitely the creepiest with the, uh, with the kids exploring the, the abandoned house. Thank you for watching. My social media links are in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And have a safe and happy Halloween.